Well, everybody, welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 1 Samuel chapter 12, and if I were to give this one a title, it would simply be, Don't Be Afraid. Don't Be Afraid. We see that as probably the biggest commandment in the entire Bible, and that is to not be afraid, as far as the most used. And we love to think about this when we're going through a difficult storm, when bad things are happening, but God wants us to not be afraid even when we're in storms that we made. (laughs) You know, it's different if something bad happens that you had nothing to do with, you can trust the Lord. But what about when you kind of deserve it? What if it's something that you have created? Can we still not be afraid and trust God? Well, today's chapter is going to tell us, yes, even in those kind of storms, we can still trust the Lord. I don't know about you, but that brings me a lot of hope. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave us a comment on the YouTube channel on on the particular video. Let us know what your number one takeaway is. Also, make sure that you leave us a five-star review on the podcast. We've really been noticing more and more people listening to the podcast and sharing those with other people. Thank you so very much for doing that as we're creating this community together. And then, of course, always, where we all gather together, the Bible Breakdown Discussion Group on Facebook. That is where we go. And I would love for you to go there as well. And underneath the devotions that we post, let us know what your number one takeaway was from the day. Because, man, the more we dig, the more we find. And you may discover something in God's Word that we would love to know. So we don't know unless you share it. So I want you to share it with us, and let's do this together. Okay? Well, as I was telling you before, if you have your Bibles, by the way, you want to get them with, out with me to 1 Samuel chapter 12. Of course, we always we read from the New Living Translation. So I was telling you before, one of the things that I don't know about you, but I sometimes grapple with in my walk with God is... If something bad happens that I can't do anything about, something, you know, maybe something, a decision someone else makes that then affects my life or something that my kids are going through or something that something else, you know, there's a certain level of trust I have with God because, hey, I didn't do anything wrong here. So I just need to trust God and that's all I can do. It's easy for me to give that to the Lord and not be afraid. But what about when I'm the one that did it? Like I'm the one that made that boneheaded decision. I started that relational conflict. You know, I did this, I did that. Well, now I feel a sense of, well, God's not going to be with me because I did this wrong. Well, this chapter, one of the things I love about it is it completely dispels that. And if you remember, what's been going on is the nation of Israel, they went through the time of the judges, and they are now saying, we don't want a king. This is not working out for us. We need a king. Well, they never got it. The goal was not for them to have a human king. The, the goal was for God to be their king. But they kept turning their back on God and turning toward everything else. And so finally, they come to Samuel and they say, we want a king. We want a king. And Samuel says, why don't you let God be your king? No, we want a king. And so he goes to God. And God says, you know what? They didn't reject you. They rejected me. Give them what they want. And so he goes and he finds this guy named Saul. God anoints Saul to be king. And now that there is a king and the king is starting to, you know, develop his kingdom, Samuel is going to say goodbye from his public life. Now, he's still going to be around. We're still going to see him. Matter of fact, in the next chapter, we see him. But he's kind of leaving the stage as the judge and handing this over to Saul. And he's going to talk about what that looks like. But my favorite part is down toward the bottom and what he's going to say. So I want us to read this together as this great man of God is leaving the public stage. And let's see what God's Word would say to us today as we grapple with the principles in God's Word together. Okay, you ready? 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 says this. Then Samuel addressed all Israel. I have done as you have asked and given you a king. Your king is now your leader. I stand before you, an old gray-haired man, and my son serve you. I have served as your leader from the time I was a boy to this very day. Now testify against me in the presence of the Lord and before his anointed one. Whose ox or donkey have I stolen? Have I ever cheated any of you? Have I ever oppressed you? Have I ever taken a bribe or perverted justice? Tell me, and I will make right whatever I have done wrong. No, they replied, you have never cheated or oppressed us, and you have never taken even a single bribe. The Lord and his anointed one are my witnesses today, Samuel declared, and my hands are clean. Yes, he is a witness, they replied. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, Samuel continued. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Now, stand here quietly before the Lord as I remind you all the great things the Lord has done for you and your ancestors. 
When the Israelites were in Egypt and cried out to the Lord, he sent Moses and Aaron to rescue them from Egypt and to bring them into the land. But the people soon forgot about the Lord and the Lord their God, so he handed them over to Caesarea, the commander of Hazor's army. He also and also to the Philistines and to the king of Moab who fought against them. Then they cried to the Lord again and confessed, We have sinned by turning away from the Lord and worshiping the images of Baal and Ashtaroth. But we will worship you and you alone, for you will rescue us from our enemies. Then the Lord sent Gideon, Bedan, Jephthah, Jephthah rather, and Samuel to save you, and you lived in safety. But when you were afraid of Nahash, the king of Ammon, you came to me and said you wanted a king to reign over you, even though the Lord your God was already your king. All right, here is the king you have chosen, and you asked for him, and the Lord has granted you your request. Now, if you fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's command, then both you and your king will show that you recognize the Lord your God. But if you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. Now, stand here and see the great things the Lord is about to do. You know that it does not rain at this time of the year during the wheat harvest. I will ask the Lord to send thunder and rain today. Then you will realize how wicked you have been in asking the Lord for a king. Pause. So, to kind of catch you up, to remind you, over and over again, God said, I want to be your king. I want you to be able to rest in this land I've given you. I want you to be able to self-govern yourself underneath the guidance of the Torah, God's word. And they kept turning their back on God. And so they wanted one. They wanted a king. And Samuel, finally, you know, God gave him permission to give them a king. And he's saying, this is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but I'm going to give it to you. He said, I'm going to prove to you that God's in this because I'm going to, you know, by the, by the help of God, I'm going to perform a miracle. And so verse 18, so Samuel called to the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people were terrified of the Lord and said to Samuel, pray to the Lord your God or we will die. They all said to Samuel, for now we have added to our sins by asking for a king. So pause. So remember the reason why this was is up until then, Maybe they were looking at Samuel and going, oh, man, you don't know what you're doing. Of course we want a king. You just don't want to not be the judge. Maybe that's what they were saying. And he kept saying, no, let, let God be your king. Let God be your king. No. Well, now he's saying, I want to prove to you that God doesn't want this for you. He's going to show himself to you. That's what a miracle is, by the way. A miracle is God interrupting the natural law that he has created in order to show himself to you. That's, that's what a, a miracle is. So I'm going to show you. And so when they see, oh, no, God is not for this, they panic. But look at this is this is the message right here. This is what I want you to catch. Verse 20. Don't be afraid, Samuel reassured them. You have done wrong, but make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and don't turn back. Don't turn your back on him. Don't go back to worshiping worthless idols that cannot help or rescue you. They are all totally useless. The Lord will not abandon his people because that would dishonor his great name. For it has pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you. I will continue to teach you what is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Think of all the wonderful things he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be swept away. And so what I love about this is a lesson I think that we can all learn. And here's, here's, here's the scenario. Let's say that you messed up. Let's say you walked away from God. Let's say that you, you really started to marginalize God in your life and you had a big idea about what you wanted to do and you thought it was going to work and for a season maybe it did, but then you find yourself empty, alone, hollow, needing something more. And you want to come back to God. And you come back to God and you realize, okay, I've done something wrong and I've, I've messed up and God, I want to come back to you. And then you've got all of these, you know, the, the, the byproducts of all these bad decisions. Maybe you're, you're now in a, a difficult marriage and you don't know how you're going to work it out or your kids have gone crazy or you're, you're, you're out of a job or you're in a horrible job. You're in a mountain of debt. You're in all these things because of just medicating broken places in your life. And God would still say to you, 
don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Turn your heart to me. Let me lead you, and it's going to be okay. Look at what he said to the nation of Israel. You have certainly done wrong, but make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and don't turn your back on him. Don't go back to the worthless idols that can't help you anyway. What would God's word be to some of us who maybe we're struggling with things that if we're really honest, they're our own creation. We were medicating a broken place in our life. We, we sinned to numb the feeling of pain. Maybe we just sinned because we just flat wanted to. <laughs> and now we're coming back to the Lord and the Lord says, hey, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Well, God, how can it be okay when all this is going on? Oh, no. What, it's not okay that it happened, but I'm not going to let it define your future. But this is what you've got to do. You've got to turn back to me with all your heart, God would say. Trust in me and turn away from those worthless idols. And if you'll do that, though you did wrong, I am going to make all things new in your life. So what's the takeaway today? Don't be afraid. Whether it's a storm that you had nothing to do with or a storm that you created, you can't help what happens to you, but you can help how you respond. And the number one response that any of us can make is to turn our hearts to the Lord. Turn ourselves wholly to Him. Give Him the key to our heart and the key to our life and say, God, I'm going to follow you, whatever that looks like, because only you can lead me in the right direction. And if you will do that, I will promise you, He will always lead you in the right direction. Don't be afraid. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Thank you, God, that you don't differentiate the sins that were done to us or the sins that we've done to ourselves in terms of how much we can trust you. We can trust you with every area of our life. Even those areas that we're ashamed of, we can still trust you. I pray today that our trust in you will grow so that we will trust you more and more and realize that if we could just see how loved by you we are, we would never be discouraged again, and we would put everything we have into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, God's Word says, and we actually read it today, 1 Samuel 12, verse 24, be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve Him. Think of all the wonderful things that He has done. Don't forget, God has a plan for your life, and we're reading all about God's providence despite our silliness. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for 1 Samuel chapter 13. 